We want to hear from you this morning. Were you at Wembley on Sunday? And did any of the scenes that you might have uh, witnessed, do they make you uneasy as a fan? Do they put you off going back to football? And if so, why? What did you see on Sunday? We want to hear from you this morning. 08717 Simon, this is where we're at this morning. I mean, we've been, we've been scouring the newspapers this morning and they're full of this. Yeah. Families of England players had to run, we're being told this morning, um, from hundreds of ticketless hooligans who stormed Wembley in the build-up to Sunday's final. Yep. It's been reported widely this morning that the FA could be looking at sanctions that could impact on the British and Irish bid to stage the 2030 World Cup. Now, what we now hear this morning is that a number of players' families were caught up in the chaos after a metal door was forced open at entrance G, G for George, close to the Bobby Moore statue. It's now emerged a large mob charged inside, knocking stewards out the way, and they headed for seats that were allocated to members of players' families. Family members, were told, were left feeling intimidated when they asked the intruders to leave and sit elsewhere. Now... Roberto Mancini's son, Andrea, was even caught up in it. And he said, There was a mess with ticketless fans. My seat was taken, so I had to watch the first half sitting on stadium steps. I found another place for the second half of the game. The FA called the whole thing, Simon, an embarrassment. Now, Wembley's capacity, 90,000. Yeah. 60,000 yeah. were, were meant to be admitted on Sunday. So probably in the, in the end, end up, there was more than that. The stadium, of course, was under capacity by 30,000 because of COVID restrictions. I mean, Simon, this was serious, but it could have got very serious. And this morning, we're now asking questions like, should the scenes involving those very fans who stormed the Wembley security, should they have any bearing on a potential joint UK World Cup 2030 bid? Look, what we saw on Sunday... Um, the scale of it is yet to be determined. The scale will be ramped up and ramped up and ramped up because it's a new story and it's a new cycle. And I understand, before you get cross with me, that the media has to report these subject matters. But we also have to look at the reasons why... Not excuses, and not justifications, but the underlying reasons why people think they can behave in this fashion. The lack of security and management around an event that needs to be coordinated by UEFA and Wembley. The, the engagement of fans' perspective about how they have a sense of entitlement, about how they can behave in football. We've seen influential figures in football use terminology like mobilisation against football club owners when they don't like the behaviour of a football club. And all of these things bring, bring in a mix. Now, you bring in a very angry, divided society and a repressed and oppressed society by the very sentiments that we've lived under for the last 18 months, good or bad, and you find yourself in this mix. There are no excuses about ticket prices. There are no excuses about 90,000 fans or 60,000 fans rather than 90,000 fans. There is a section of English sports fans, a section, a minority section, that behave appallingly. They're not representative of the overall body of fans that support the England team around the world, support the England rugby team, the England cricket team, uh, the boxing stars that we have in this country. They are a credit at times, but there are a section of people in our society that are antisocial, that need to be attended to and dealt with. Mm. And the idea that we ramp this up, when you look at World Cups... We're not ramping it up, incidentally. Uh, uh, I, want to, I want to cut well, you off well, at that. No one's ramping well, it up. Well, well, we, well, we are, Jim. We're, we're not ramping we, it we up. Are, we are looking at a society... We're over-egging it. H hold on. Let me finish, and then you can come across me and tell me how wrong I am. When, we look, when we're living in a society, <laughs> like all societies in Europe, where we're hosting an event with people that have been in a very strange frame of mind, I wonder... <laughs> and you, I wonder... What? I wonder how we would be... How, if we, how if, strange a frame of mind you, do you need to be in, Jim, you're not let me finish. Is this you're, a you're, pandemic that's forcing you're, you're, these people to go to Wembley and think, Jim, I'm going to go right through that metal Jim, door. you're playing to a gallery, right, because it's a populist position. What you're suggesting is that people's behaviour, a minority of people's behaviour, should influence the destination of a World Cup in eight years' time because a security force in this country didn't do their job. In 1982, they awarded a World Cup to Spain when ETA and, Sef and Basque separatists were letting bombs off all over Spain. We've got a World Cup in 2030 that's been awarded, 2022, that's been awarded to a nation that cut your hands off, outlaw homosexuality, and don't recognise women in society. Mm. So don't be telling me that we've got an issue that's any worse than any other country. If this was held in Hungary, you'd have homophobic abuse on the stadium, in the stands, and all the challenges that we've, we've had. We've got to get context. What we've seen is totally and utterly unacceptable.
Yeah. But we as a country, as an infrastructure, have one of the best infrastructures for football, mm. have one of the best support bases in, in, in world football for football, and we have all the dynamics to be able to host... So host. Wh- why when was we, that not demonstrated on Sunday? Well, did we have this issue? Why is the back page of the Times, Wembley Yobs target England stars' families? Forget, forget well, well, Qatar signing. Uh, hold on. For, forget H- hold forget on, Jim. comparing you know, do, and do you contrasting. Know, do you know, Let's just talk about Sunday. Because it's a bloody good headline, Jim, and do you actually think that those people... I would not have the faintest idea if I went to Wembley Stadium, where those families would be sitting. Do you not think it was an unfortunate coincidence that these Herberts, these morons, these abusive individuals went into an area where the, where the, where the, where the, the players' wives were? Now the headline says target. They specifically targeted them. They didn't target them. They probably found a, their way into an environment that A, they shouldn't have been in, and by a fo- unfortunate set of circumstances, give newspapers a headline like that. So it, it shouldn't have any bearing on the World Cup bid? I think it shouldn't have any bearing in context with how this could be superimposed in any other country right now. If this was in Portugal, then the people that are it's bidding... It's not in Portugal. But hang on, Jim. Let's just talk about Wembley but hang on, Sunday. Jim. If we're talking about comparing and contrasting, and we are saying that the bid that's against us, potentially, for the this is Portugal and Spain. I've been in Spain. I've seen football hooliganism in Spain. I've seen it first degree. It is no worse and no better than what happens in this country. So if we were having this in Spain with the same set of circumstances, I, with the exception that the police are far more rigid in Spain with the Guardia Civil, I'm not sure that we wouldn't have seen similar mm. scenes. Okay. We'll not know that, Jim. But if we're going to compare and contrast and we're going to say we, we should self-flagellate, we should lose a World Cup because a thousand disgusting, despicable, imbecilic, drunken buffoons take our football down, then I'm troubled by that and so should you be. You shouldn't want to bring our society down. You shouldn't want to suggest that 1,000 people or 2,000 people... I shouldn't, I shouldn't people, want to bring our society down. No, you shouldn't, want to, you shouldn't want to highlight the minority of I shouldn't morons. want to highlight it. No, you shouldn't want to. You oh, should, are you going to tell the Telegraph we, we should, that? We, telegraph this morning. Well, like, Hooligans put World Cup bid under threat. You're yeah. going to tell, I'll it's, give it's, you the Telegraph number in a minute. It's called self-flagellation, Jim. Here's it's called number, running this nation time, down. I'll give you the Times number in a minute. Yeah, Wembley Yobbs target England stars family. Yeah, media. Simon. It's all the media. The individual Every aspect of the media. Crash through the metal door yep. on Sunday. Yep. I've caused the problem. The, and, and and the lack of attention to detail and the lack of Three awareness. words to you, not the media. Kev Geddes, the Kev Geddes good morning. The I was there on Sunday and the scenes of people storming the stadium made me sick and ashamed. They were not football fans. Here is the Reverend James. Good morning, Jim. We don't deserve the World Cup in 2030. We shouldn't even be thinking about hosting such an event. We're an embarrassment because, because of, of the, the minor- minority. Because of okay. the minority. Okay. They're thugs. They're not football fans. And on and on it goes. Yep. Peter in Leeds. Jim Simon, because of the disgusting scenes at Wembley, the Republic of Ireland should ditch any bid that they might have do, had do in mind with in, England do we to go that, do we for the World Cup every, in 2030. Do we accept that in every society there is an element of people that will have totally antisocial attitudes, totally antisocial outlooks, but they are not reflective of 99% of the mass of the country. If we accept that, then it's about how we manage this minority, how we manage them. Do we manage them by highlighting them, or do we manage them by marginalising them, consequencing them? Do we manage them by having proper, efficient, effective security mm. in an event that was always going to be this way? Mm-hmm. There was always going to be 250,000 people. Can you that it's our job in talk sport this morning, Simon? To be so many people, you to and be I are, balanced. Now listen to me. Yeah. So many you are you are proud as I am that so many people listen to this show. We have to highlight what happened we on have Sunday. To, we have to be balanced. We have to be balanced. That's right. Of course we are. Yeah. But that's why you and I are in the job. Absolutely. Because Jim. I tell you but, what, but jo- when you Mr. A- Jordan, yeah. I will be balanced. Okay. Because it's my job to be balanced. And that's fine. But we will damn well report oh, it. And when you read We're me- coming up to a break. We're back after this. Jim White. And Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.